Today I'm going to put uh, some mosquito larvae under the microscope. Hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here. This is uh, my little uh, yeah, vegetable garden that I've got here. And uh, right here I also found some standing water. And where there is standing water you can quite uh, certainly find of course also insect larvae. And in this case of course also mosquito larvae. Especially in tropical regions. I'm not living in a tropical region, but uh, especially in tropical regions, um, standing water is not a good uh, thing because, uh, of course, those mosquitoes that develop there, they can, of course, also transmit malaria. So I'm going to now collect a water sample and then let's have a closer look at it under the microscope. There's quite a, quite a bit of movement in here, maybe, I don't know, 20 or 30 uh, mosquito larvae. Yeah, I, I caught a few. I caught quite a few actually. Now mosquitoes are considered to be the deadliest animal worldwide. Uh, over 700 million people are infected every year with uh, uh, diseases transmitted by mosquitoes and around a million people die every year uh, because of uh, mosquito-borne diseases. Yeah, I, the list uh, of uh, diseases that are transmitted by the mosquitoes is, is quite long. <laughs> Not only humans are um, affected, also animals. Um, um, but there is interestingly one uh, disease, uh, one virus that is not transmitted uh, by mosquitoes, which might come as a little bit of a surprise uh, to you. I'm going to tell you what it is at the end um, of this video. So I don't like mosquitoes, uh, but I only like them under the microscope. So what I have done, therefore, is, is I have uh, taken um, one of these mosquitoes, uh, mosquito larvae and I put it uh, on a microscope slide. Now those larvae are fairly large uh, so this means I used some spacers. Uh, you can see that I placed left and right um, of uh, the mosquito larvae. I placed a cover glass and I put a third larger cover glass on top over it so the mosquito larvae was uh, limited in its movement but it was not uh, completely uh, crushed. Under the microscope this is how it looks like. Actually I have to tell you um, I, I do consider it uh, to, to a certain extent beautiful. I'm almost a little bit reluctant to say that word, but for me beauty is not uh, um, only in, in, in symmetry and in aesthetic appeal, but also the intricacy of nature and all of the details and, and, and yeah, um, is something that I consider quite, uh, quite beautiful. Well, maybe fascinating would be a better word to use here. Um, we can see um, that the mosquito is almost transparent. We, can, we are able to see the, um, the, the intestine um, on the inside Inside and here, this uh, organ here in the back with a little ear bubble, that is a breathing organ and uh, the mosquito actually is able to breathe air by sticking out this organ into the ear. So it's kind of dangling upside down and in the water and it's breathing uh, with this breathing organ. We can still see that there are some movements here um, of the intestine. This is a slightly smaller uh, larva and you can see that um, its uh, head is uh, fairly large and therefore um, it's kind of got stuck with its head uh, between the cover glass and the microscope slide. And and it's able to wiggle around freely with the rest of the body. This is one of the reasons also why uh, mosquito larvae are referred to as wigglers. Um, yeah, <laughs> not surprisingly. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm also going to uh, try to mount uh, an adult mosquito because after one day, um, already um, the, the first mosquito started to appear. I removed the lid of uh, the petri dish and this is how it looks like, right? Um, it came out um, from its pupa because those larvae form pupae um, and there is something called metamorphosis going on. The larvae changes into an adult insect and uh, this adult insect now was sitting on top of the water surface waiting for it to dry and then it starts uh, to fly away. It mates and then again the life cycle is completed by laying eggs again into um, into the water. So um, I looked at this uh, yeah, somewhat marvelous creature here um, and noticed that uh, essentially the legs have those interesting white stripes here. Um, this can serve as an identification um, characteristic. Um, however, um, there are so many mosquito species out there and I'm not an entomologist, I'm not an insect specialist, so I leave it up to you to identify this species and I would like to encourage you to write comments in the comment section if you know what uh, species it is. Yeah, it was uh, sitting on the surface of, of the water and uh, it flew away. Yeah, and I was able to catch it again in this tube and um, after approximately one day, it yes, it died in the tube. Uh, it didn't find any food to eat and therefore I decided to pin it up like this and I wanted to put the wings under the microscope. Um, now, scissors 
scissors would have been too large to remove the wings, so I used uh, tiny insect needles uh, to kind of remove the wings, and here they are. And then I made a permanently mounted microscope slide uh, using uh, those wings here. So I added a little bit of mounting medium here on the slide, and then I had to transfer the wings into the mounting medium. The wings are very small, so I used uh, a toothpick, uh, covered a little bit with a sticky mounting medium, and I transferred the wings uh, over into the mounting medium uh, one by one. And then, of course, uh, I added, added a cover glass on top and I put everything under the microscope. Just make sure when you do that, that uh, your microscope objective does not become contaminated um, with the uh, mounting medium. And under my compound microscopes, all of the beautiful details of this structure become visible. The first thing that I noticed is, is that uh, those wings, of course, have a lot of scales, those tiny little scales, um, similar somewhat uh, to the wings of a butterfly, I have to tell you. Um, and uh, those scales are quite certainly important for the aerodynamics um, of uh, this uh, insect so that it's able to fly properly. Um, some of the scales actually broke off um, as well and uh, sometimes you are able to see scales like this also in dust samples. Maybe some of you have already um, seen them before if you have a microscope. Now, of course, you would like to know um, a little bit uh, what is now this one disease that was not uh, transmitted um, by mosquitoes. And uh, this is indeed, uh, interestingly, HIV AIDS is not transmitted uh, by mosquitoes. There is absolutely no evidence for this and there are several reasons for it. First of all, uh, the AIDS virus, HIV, is not able to reproduce in the insect. And the reason is, is that the insect, uh, the mosquito, does not have any uh, T cells. Uh, T cells are sp a special type of immune cells in which uh, the AIDS virus reproduces. Uh, mosquitoes don't have those, and therefore um, the virus is not able to reproduce uh, in mosquitoes. And the second reason is, is because the concentration of HIV um, is uh, too low in the blood, and, and therefore the mosquito is not able to transmit a sufficient concentration of virus from person to person. So if HIV AIDS were able to be transmitted by mosquitoes, honestly, uh, this would be a, 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 real, uh, a real problem, okay? Luckily, it's not the case. Um, and I therefore recommend, let's do that what we are able to do. Um, let's uh, prevent standing water and let's uh, try to control um, the things that we are able to control. And that is, is be careful when you water your plants and uh, make sure that uh, everything is properly dried. Yeah, it's now slowly starting to rain. I think it's time uh, to call it a day for the day. Hope that you like uh, these type of videos. Of course, I would like to invite you to subscribe to this channel so that you do not uh, miss out on any videos. Uh, all the best. Uh, happy microbe hunting as always. And uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.